There truly has never been a better landscape for narrative in gaming. What with realistic graphics having evolved past the point of butcher paper marionettes, and most game genres, let's face it, they're about as gone as far as their concepts are willing to go. But it seems like the games that build themselves solely on narrative strengths are getting more and more shit. Probably because most story games, while packing off most gameplay extrusions that threaten to rip the story trousers, pretty much exemplified by the proliferation of the walking simulator subgenre of narrative driven games, in which gameplay design pretty much starts and ends with left stick up means go forward. But you know what? After having recently finished Grim Fandango on PS4, I couldn't help but wonder if the walking simulator genre is a natural successor to the old adventure game. I mean, both promise an involving narrative over any sort of scintillating gameplay experience, but where adventure style games would stumble is that you couldn't play the damn things without sitting on GameFAQ's lap like it's Santa, and all you want for Christmas is to figure out how to get them worker bees to give up their freaking tools! The most puzzle solutions range from unintuitive to batshit footlong, and follow the securitist train of alien logic that most human brains could never even consider. And I feel like any game that requires you to consult a guide in order to play it has definitely failed in some regard. Tactfully pruning this necessity for a guide, to me, seems like the optimal way to do a narrative game, keeping your head firmly held under total immersion. Well, yes, I am going somewhere with this. You see, I've been playing this new game recently that builds itself as a narrative experience of sorts. Hellblade Senua, 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 Sunwise Sacrifice, baked up fresh from developer Ninja Theory. I approached Hellblade with some skepticism after hearing the words, Narrative Experience from Ninja Theory. Because the last narrative that developer made us experience was that of DMC Devil May Cry, which had all the literary merit and subtlety as two pieces of ketchup-soaked bread being clumsily and repeatedly smashed together. In the end, though, I found Hellblade pleasantly surprising. In Sunwise Sacrifice, you played as, you guessed it, a young Celtic woman named Sacrifice on her way to perform a Senua of sorts. So your boyfriend caught a case of the seasonal flu, but since this was the early 80s, it might as well have been several flaming swords to the gullet. Now Senua must take his head to Hela, in the realm of the dead and see if she can't get him back. But the road is dangerous and unpredictable, maybe not existing at all, as the fabric of reality grows thinner and thinner. In case that short summary didn't get any gears grinding in the blurb at the start of the game about how its distinct and deeply researched portrayal of psychosis and its corresponding behaviors maybe isn't clicking anything in your mind, and our destination literally being hell with one hockey stick removed wasn't enough, I'll spell out right now that we're probably in our own hallucinatory hell of some sort dealing with these intense traumas. Despite this obviousness though, I will admit to getting into Hellblade quite a bit, largely from how the game threads the running psychosis theme throughout the experience. Sinua is constantly hearing voices, some deprecating, some constantly worried, maybe one or two encouraging. And I mean constantly. Look at a door and all of a sudden the soundtrack turns into Ooh, is that the right door? Oh, yeah. Etc. etc. They rarely leave, and combined with the tight camera angle, it effectively enforces this notion of being trapped, rarely leaving time for you to think for yourself in actual life. That being said, I highly recommend playing this game with headphones so you can better appreciate that polish of sound design. When I first started and the main narrator voice started up, Close so I, can speak without I instinctively the pushed a bit to the right just because she sounded like she was so close to my left ear. It was, it was honestly unsettling. That being said, I also recommend subtitles, just because there are so many voices at certain times, it's possible to miss out on what's actually important information, and what's just not- WAS THAT A CROW OR SOMETHING? WHAT WAS THAT?! And since the voices are largely your only direction, you can probably see where I'm going with that sentence. Honestly, in many ways, Hellblade Moana's sacrifice feels like a Celtic reimagining of Silent Hill. Primarily Silent Hill 2. I say primarily because that's the one I played. They even got a Pyramid Head's cousin, Bramble Head. Both games are about a traumatized protagonist making their way through a personal hellscape to confront inner demons, and both games possess the same variety of choking, thick atmosphere that makes you feel like every ladder you climb is going to have a goatee stroking devil at the top. The kind of atmosphere that you only realize you were holding your breath in until you're 10 minutes out of it. The most stark differences are in gameplay terms. While Silent Hill 2 had exploration puzzles that necessitated the old Game Fact Santa setup and combat that had been doused in maple syrup, so it was nice and sticky. Hellblade is more straightforward puzzles and kind of snappy combat, actually. The gameplay of Hellblade is broken down actually more into thirds. You got walking simulator, you got puzzle solving, and you got the hack and slash. The puzzles work by having a door locked by a couple of symbols, and Sinua must scrutinize the nearby environment in order to find those symbols. This works pretty well in conjunction with the idea of paranoia, but the interpretation of benign elements in your surroundings. But I like them too because they allow for that degree of exploration without forcing you to cuddle up to these illogical puzzle solutions with game facts. And it works. But what works a bit less is the combat third of the game. It's a standard light and heavy block dodge affair, 
But the big issue with the gameplay on the whole, honestly, is how narrative and gameplay don't so much mesh as they do link, if that makes sense. You're either hanging around the story world, smacking dudes, or looking for symbols, and rarely do the three ever intersect. And it makes Hellblade a lot of times feel distinctly video gamey. Especially the combat, which just does not integrate at all. Every now and then you enter a circular arena, the game's version of a giant red X to stand on, then fight off a few dudes before moving on, just like nothing happened. But every enemy has a bit too much health, and every enemy wave feels tripled for no reason, so the combat just really distinctly feels like padding. Like someone in Ninja Theory decided they needed to put at least one more egg in the gameplay basket. Yeah, you're just gonna want to go into the menu here and you're gonna want, yeah, just, 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 just turn that off. Trust me, it's gonna save you a whole lot of time. And when you learn how obvious every combat scenario is, it pokes some holes in the atmosphere. The other big wrinkle in the gameplay sits in the middle of everything like a big bullfrog made of shit. Hellblade has permadeath. Get careless too many times and your progress is erased. Save file gone, burn the PS4, buy a new one. Of course, it's kind of weird for a narrative driven game to have permadeath. When seeing the end is kind of important, maybe, to a narrative experience, maybe. But honestly, it's not that bad. The combat is tedious and long at times, but since you can dodge instantly and that your invincibility frames are just excessive at times, then you're rarely gonna di actually die to combat. The boss battles can get intense though, and the permadeath aspect hanging overhead does add this instance of no 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 when the huge lads with the massive vehicle maintenance tools start winding up. It's kind of weird, I've been comparing it to uh, Silent Hill 2, a distinctly horror game, but I had a friend who was playing Hellblade at the, around the same time, and he said that Hellblade could be as harrowing as a horror game, but it wasn't a horror game. And honestly, I disagree. Isn't the idea of a horror game to make the player feel uncomfortable? And Hellblade certainly makes the player feel uncomfortable with its various whoosies and whatsits. Well, there is kind of one bit of the game I'm not quite sure is supposed to make you uncomfortable, and that's the sort of mocap acting for Senua herself. She's really just it's something off. There's un, something unsettling about the way she just moves and just like looks at the camera. It's probably by design, but honestly, she just kind of looks like an amateur high school dramatics student just trying to act, which is different from act. It's not the longest game in the world, maybe six or eight hours, depending on how many times you fail the puzzles. But for a $30 game, there's, I'd say the value is pretty much worth it. That being said, the game pretty much has no replay value whatsoever. There are collectibles to find in the form of these lore stones, but they don't really add a whole lot to the experience, and you could easily just miss them. It's not that integral, unless you want the platinum trophy, which you're going to find all 44 of them. The game is just gorgeous for 30 bucks. Now, this isn't technically an indie game, Ninja Theory, you're kind of cheating, but I'll let it slide, and this, the game just presentation-wise looks great, and it really brings these horrific environments to life when the horror elements really do take a center stage. But at the end of the day, I think I can recommend Hellblade, but specifically only if you're a fan of narrative experiences. If you're not willing to give a game leeway for maybe skipping on gameplay so it can buff up the story, then this isn't the place for you. This is that hybrid of walking simulator and puzzle solver, and it's a very slow game at times, and the combat, don't come for the combat, the combat is just there, it's not particularly exemplary, it's not worth anything. Hellblade is a successful game in the respect that it tries to envelop the player in this sort of unrelenting shroud of psychosis, and it definitely works. The mental effects are there, and it's a, it's a harrowing experience while you're in there, so that is why I can recommend Hellblade, because it succeeds. If the game is successful, it can make up for a lot of faults. And in my opinion, I found the story and the emphasis on the experience worth the price of entry, even if the gameplay comes up short sometimes. But what's more difficult to forgive are these just blatantly boring menus that they got here. Seriously, Ninja Theory, what are you? Alright, I'll see you guys later.